Hello, good afternoon and welcome to this in another series of Archem Live. Today, I'm your host, Dane Parker, and we will be covering the nuts and bolts of sweet potato cultivation. May I ask at this time that you like, comment, share, and of course subscribe to our pages, and do tell your farmers and friends to watch the videos after we would have uploaded them. And so today, the sweet potato crop care guide will be exposed in all its detail so you can benefit to increase your potential and at the same time benefit from the added value that it presents. Now, we will be looking at the land clearance and weed management aspect of the crop. We'll also be looking at pest disease management. We'll of course have our usual farmer testimonials. You know, you'll hear from our farmer or farmers about the results that they've been achieving. And of course, we will look how to treat with your planting material, your cropping cycle, and of course your foliar and fertilizer management. And we could not close the session without, of course, dissecting the numbers, looking at our cost-benefit analysis to see if what we're purporting does it make sense. And of course, further, We'll have more success stories of farmers who could not join us live nor be recorded but would have sent in their photographs of having used our crop care guide in their cultivation. So let's begin. The objective of our program is to increase your yield by up to 40%. What does this mean? It simply means that where you are standing now, I strongly believe and we strongly believe that you can do better. And the objective, of course, today is to show you systematically how this can be done with basic, easy, and reproducible steps, you will see the added value. And of course, for you to get this kind of results, we were looking at, of course, our site selection in terms of what is it that your soil is saying in terms of your analysis. Do you have sufficient rainfall? in our adequate temperature. When you prepare your land, how deep do you get the plows in so as to be able to have your tubers penetrating the ground? And of course, as I'd mentioned earlier, critical to you having a successful crop is to select proper planting material. Of course, these should be free from pests and diseases and also the kind of quality. So look at the previous crop before you select those planting materials. Additionally, are you rain fed or is it irrigated? And if so, if it is rain fed, are you planting in the periods where you'll be having maximum rainfall so as to allow the crop to benefit in terms of bulking up? And if you do irrigate, are you providing sufficient water throughout the crop life so as to allow for this added benefit of the plant using the water? And, of course, we could not speak unless we are talking about our fertilizer and fertility management. What types of fertilizers are, have you been using? Have they been effective in what you're doing? And at the same time, how have you changed or adapted your program so as to improve, increase your yield over the period? And the most critical factor, after all is said and done, have you been managing the weevils? What about the webworms and your beetles? Have you been suppressing these populations and are you doing so effectively? So let's move on to our land's clearance strategy. Prior to planting, we can use our glyphos max to knock down and to remove the shrubs and weeds that are there. You can also do a cocktail of glyphos max with benzene. Now the added benefit of using benzene in the mixture with your gly glyphos max is to suppress the seeds that are in your soil. And so what you'll have is that post-planting, you'll have far less weeds to deal with. What is the benefit of having this? Remember now, farmers, that weeds are going to be competing with your crop. Now, we use Glyphosmax at 30 ml, and we also use benzene at 30 ml. Both products can be mixed in a cocktail and applied using your knapsack sprayers or your boom sprayers to cover the length and breadth of your land. 
also farmers, I want to also emphasize this. We tend to only focus our efforts on the internal parts of the land. What about the periphery? Are you keeping these weeds around your plots? And if so, are there disadvantages to keeping them in that manner? Now, bearing in mind that we say the weeds will compete for space, for nutrients, and they will also serve to harbor pests. Now, remember, rats and mongoose can also be a serious factor in growing sweet potatoes. Now, during your crop production cycle, once you've planted out, one of the strategies, remember the vines would not have covered the entire surface of the soil as yet, you can go through with products such as our Paracat Super or even Scorcher. Now, this of course is what we call spot spraying. Now, this spot spraying allows you to knock down weeds since you would not have had an entire area to deal with. Now, having used benzene previously, what you'll notice, farmers, is that the level of weeds that are now in your field will be significantly less. And so, if you're going through to do spot spraying, remember, our Paracot Super and Scorcher are so formulated to burn the plant tissues. And so, use your spray shield. I've seen innovative ways of farmers making them. If you can acquire them, I recommend that you do so. Again, the edges are, the, are, are around the field are important areas to remove. Now, take a look at the picture to my left on my slide. This damage of this nice tuber is actually as a result of mongoose. Mongoose, as well as rats, or generally rodents, can cause a severe problem. Now, if around the plot allows for the for a host or the pest to build up, then naturally you'll be fighting a losing battle. Makes no sense to take on our crop care program and to put in the work only to be harboring your pest or, or even mongoose or rats in the field. And of course, should you find that you are having these issues and you don't have these um, weeds around your field, we do have our storm rat poison. We do have um, bait stations as well. Or you can even go ahead and make your own and put them throughout the field. This again is another strategy in ensuring your future harvest. Remember, if you don't have marketable tubers, then what are you farming for? Now, bear in mind too that the weeds that are in your field will be competing for the nutrients that you would have been putting down. Now, let's say you would have spent $10,000 on fertilizers and you would have gone through and applied whether it be broadcasting or spot spraying. Now, you are allowing weeds to compete. Are you then saying that you are prepared to lose that $10,000 bit of investment? I think it not. So ensure that your field is weed free. Now, another benefit from using our crop care program is the added value of the reduction in the insect pressure. Now, this of course can lead to lower market yields. Now, we have insect pests such as your webworms, your beetles, and your weevils. Those are three major insect pests that you need to manage. Now, if the foliage is damaged, it simply means that you put the plant under added stress. Now, the plant itself will convert its efforts and its mechanism into recovery rather than production. And so, with the use of our program, which includes diazinon and Caratrax, which we'll speak to later, this will assist in reducing your pest population. Now, I can't speak too much on this. Your weaver. The application of diazinon, Caratrax, and dimethoate in rotation controls both adults, the pupae, and other stages of the life cycle of your potato weaver. So, if you're able to reduce this population, what it means is that you'll have no more marketable tubers. When you hear from Mr. Griffiths later on, what he'll say to you is that the tubers themselves are clean. This, of course, will lead to zero um, rejection from your market point of view. And so, you're able to sell more. Now, if you have your drip irrigation system installed, diazinon can be drenched 
or you can use our botanic guard, which of course can be used in the early stages to lengthen the control of the insect pest pressure. This of course will lead to even further marketable yields in the crop. Now, to the left is your weaver, your beetle rather, and what this does is to pierce the leaves. And the more it bites is the smaller the surface area, and the smaller the surface area, the lower you find your photosynthesis levels. White flies also tend to give a bit of problems in sweet potatoes. These of course can transmit various viruses. And so we say again, use Caprid 20 SL. This can of course be used throughout the cycle, but I also recommend that rotation, rotation, rotation. And so Caprid in rotation with Dazenon or Caratrox, and if you can put your hands on Dimethoid, then those four make excellent rotation products throughout the pest cycle. Another pest that could also be debilitating on the crop is webworms. Now, this of course, these insect pests, this is the, the larvae that actually causes the damage. And what they do is that they feed on the underside and pretty much skeletonize the leaves. A reduction in the leaf area, again, reduction in the photosynthetic area, thereby causing lower yields. I'm hoping farmers that we are following and that the information being disseminated is pretty clear. So if you manage weeds, manage your insect pests, then of course you are two steps away from getting your perfect crop. Now, these are some additional um, products that I'd mentioned. So via your drip system, while you're putting on your nutrient or you're just fertigating or you're just using, just adding water, you can add your botanic guard or your diazinon. Now normally, if you're using a bulk tank mix, we recommend that you work your calculations in terms of the volume of water being applied multiplied by the amount per gallon. So in the case of diazinon, it's 15 ml per gallon. If you're using a 100 gallon barrel, it simply means that you need a 150 milliliters of diazinon to be fed into your field. We normally also recommend that you apply our new FIMP, which is our spreader sticker surfactant that allows for better penetration, better absorption, and better wetting of the surface of the plants. Also via foliar application, diazinon or caratrax. Now I did promise you that you would be hearing from our farmer. One such individual who would have taken on the crop care program from the onset with a view to see what would have transpired. So let us introduce the farmer to you today. He is Glenroy Griffiths. He's from Shudley, Manchester. Welcome farmers to this another series of Adkin Plant Life. We're here today in Fine Grass, Shudley, Manchester, where the crop of focus is sweet potato. With me today is Mr. Glenroy Griffiths. Welcome to Akim Plant Life, Sir Griffiths. Good to have you, Mr. Um, Parker. Welcome. Yeah, man. So the focus today is, of course, as I mentioned, sweet potato. Now, this crop, of course, we cannot overstate the importance to both the local and international markets. But, of course, the main active focus is our crop care program. And so, Sir Griffiths, we would have been here over a successive period of time showcasing and applying our products. What, if any, are some of the benefits that you've observed thus far using the program? Two benefits that I've observed. One, the, the first is the quality and the yield that I've see, observed per acre okay. using the product. Now, note carefully that you would have mentioned the quality and the yield that you would have observed. Now, the quality and the yield that would have been observed in the field. Now, when you say quality, what does that mean in terms of the tubers that you would have been harvesting thus far? The, the saleable, that is what able to um, meet the market and the consumers are in better condition, right? The foliage, I notice, and the, the tubers, which is so important, they are much cleaner 
and indeed representation to the market is much better. Indeed. So now this, of course, farmers would have been directly as a result of the crop care program. Now we would have come in with our insecticidal program, our regiment, which includes that the use of dimethoate, diazinon, as well as carotrax, and in some instances, caprid. This, of course, is to reduce the impact of the pres pressure. Now, diazinon, of course, and dimethoate, which would have been the two products, are geared towards controlling the sweet potato weevil as well as beetle. So if those populations are down, then the quality of the tuber, of course, is what you'll see. Now, talk to us about the harvest in terms of the number of tubers you would have been observing in the root zone of the plants. I have observed up to six um, tubers, saleable tubers at the root zone, much improved over last crop. Now, you are hearing for yourselves, farmers, sometimes six, we've, we've scratched and dug here as we've found eight, in some instances, five. Now, note keenly now that we're talking about multiple tuberization now. Now, the reason you would have been seeing that, and I would have explained that to you over the period, is that the application of the Miller products to include cytokine, which is the key, green steam, as well as nutrient express. Now, when these products are applied in a, in a sequential regimen that we've observed, which is week three, five, and seven, what you're getting is multiple tubers. Now, what it really signals to the plant, especially cytokine, is to give me the level of cell differentiation. So you're getting feeder roots on one side, but that's not important. What you're looking for are those roots that are specifically for maturation and which will develop into the tubers themselves. So that's the reason we come in at week three, five, and seven. And of course, that cocktail mixture, we rotate our insecticide program with that. Now, Sir Griffiths, you mentioned that the benefits are there. You've seen it for yourselves. The, 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 the gentleman who assists you to plant and dig, what's the feedback in terms of the wider farming district that you're in? What it has are they saying? It's been tremendous. It's going like wildfire. And other farmers are asking for us to explain what has caused this change. And in fact, they really want us to have a field day so that we can, you know, and you know, disseminate this kind of information to the right across section of farmers in the area. So there you have it, farmers. We're bringing about a change, one farming district at a time. We are here, of course, in fine grass. The farmers are going to be exposed. You, our viewing audience, you are being exposed. Multiple tubers is the key now. Because what you really want, in some instances, we've seen potato when it's just running all over the place. And when you go to dig, there's nothing there. With this program, what we do is to redirect the plant's energy into production rather than vining. We're not interested in growing leaves and vines. What we're interested in is having tubers developing at the root zone. Now, week seven and nine, we would have applied Sugar Express. And that, of course, is the bulking up stage. What are the, 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 the persons in the market saying in terms of the sizes and the quality and, and, and what are the end users saying? The, the end users are saying that the size are much suitable mm -hmm. and, you know, much heavier and all of that. So, you know, it's working tremendously. We are very happy about it. Okay. And I'm sure at some point, I, this is a key question that I've always asked. What are, what's your wallet saying? It's, it's, it's good. It's good. In terms of what I'm getting back, Yes. I am very pleased right now. In, okay. in, in terms of um, my increase in my wallet. Now, another key question to ask, how do you compare this crop as against the previous crops that you, you would have been, you would have, you've had like planted? I've, I've said, um, we have seen a 100% increase. Um, I'm, I'm expect, because we are going to reap come January again. We have three phases that we are going to do. Um, because of the chemical that we have been using. No, note again, farmers, a hundred percent increase. This is not me saying it. I'm just repeating what the farmer would have said. The rationale, multiple tubers, multiple harvest, and at the same time, large saleable quality. This is as a result of our 
nutrient program. All right, so now you mentioned 8,000 pounds. We recently did some sample harvesting, which is break that down for our viewers. What do, what did, what did exactly did we do? Well, we re reaped last Monday and we reaped um, 2,000 pounds mm -hmm. and we expect to reap um, come January and you know, later on. And um, because we are reaping it in phases because all the tubers don't develop one time. So, you know, um, because of that, I'm expecting to do about 800 pounds from this field. 8,000 pounds? Yeah. So, that again is directly the benefit to using the crop care guide and to using you know, our crop care program multiple harvest over a successive period and of course we expect to have a greater level of bulking up in terms of the tubers as we add our our miller program to it in terms of sugar express um, even if you were to apply our potassium thiosulfate again to assist with further bulking up of the crop the farmer would have said it. We would have heard from Sir, Mr. Griffiths. I want for you now farmers to take a snippet of the view of what we're seeing at the root zone. So you yourselves can be so knowledgeable in terms of the crop care guide. Join us once more as we continue our guide in using Akem's crop care lines in various crops. Signing out for this week. Okay, welcome back viewers. We do understand that we are having some technical difficulties on our YouTube and Facebook pages. Um, the video will be uploaded immediately thereafter it's recording. Of course, we're recording it as we are going. So it will be uploaded immediately after. So for those who have joined us on Instagram, welcome. Thanks for participating and we, we will speak shortly afterwards. Now, you would have heard from Mr. Griffiths in terms of his direct feedback and his experience throughout the crop cycle. The idea here and now is to push the crop in such a manner to produce more tuber roots rather than feeder roots. And so, in addition to managing your pests, managing your weeds, we want a higher level, a greater percentage of tuber formation throughout the crop cycle. This, of course, you know, starts at this point in time where you are selecting your planting material. What is it that you're using? How are you treating with them from the onset? So the, in, the, the, when you are choosing your planting material, find fields that would have been high performing, productive in, in a sense. It wouldn't make sense the previous crop beard had smaller tubers or little to none or was mostly running all over the place. While you would have done that, we say start with treating that slip. Get your diazinon inside your 55 gallon drum barrel and immerse it with your cytoplex and your kickstart. Now the idea at this point in time of course is to control whatever insect pests that are present but at the same time you want that strong vigorous grow out from your, from your plants. So inside that mixture ensure the farmers by the way you're wearing your, your protective gear apply your green stem if you're doing a drum mixture, it's 250 mils. However, in, in most cases, we find that you don't need to mix an entire drum. Three quarters or halfway, and you can just simply immerse for about um, 30 seconds to a minute, and then remove them, allow them to dry off, and then you, you plant out. In handling these pesticides, I must say, farmers, safety, of course, is of paramount interest. I would want you to be exposing yourselves and you're not wearing an apron, a plastic one by the way, so that whatever absorption will not take place on your clothing. Wear your long sleeve gloves and your goggles and respirators so as to not be in direct contact with your pesticide. Now, once you would have treated those slips, you can move into the field.
the purpose of this, the, the, the green stem is to reduce the stress. You would have been cutting slips, whatever waterlogged conditions, um, the application of the chemicals that you've been doing just now can bring about some amount of damage. Now, the green stem serves a purpose to help the plant to recover from that. Cytoplex, which is your key hormone here, which con contains your gibberellic acid, your cytokinins and your auxins, are going to be helping those nod nodes to produce roots. And so what you want to have, do have that happening is as early as you are in the ground, they can grow out. We've seen fields where up to 25-30% of the slips die off. We want to plant and have all them catching so that the uniformity is there in the field and the growth and development can take place. Now, whether you use our root max or our solid grow, the objective at this point in time is to increase the root potential to have that quick catching of the slips so the grow out process can take place. The addition of your diazinon or carachacs to your mixture of course helps in that scenario there to kill whatever insect pests that are present. You know, you'll be moving slips from one field to another. So you want to be able to control if you're moving any planting material, any pests at the same time that are moving from field to field. Now, throughout the crop cycle, your, your focus is at three main stages. Firstly, the initial development. That is where you'll have a somewhat of a decision by the planting material. What is going to be happening in terms of my feeder roots as well as storage roots? The second stage is, of course, your vining stage. You want to limit that side of the plant. And the third stage, of course, where it gets maximum growth, where the plant is now focused on sizing up the tubers. Now, note carefully, as I said, the second stage is the area that you want to limit. Because if the crop starts running, then the plant will now become vegetative rather than generative. Now, what do I mean by that? I've seen farmers have to brush down the whole field because when they search at three, four months, nothing is there. The plant's energy has been directed into those vining. It's just running all over the place. I mean, a perfect Olympic race, if you might say. Now, the idea with that is the application of too much nitrogen. Now, I know that we like to add our organic matter to our soils, but if too much nitrogen is present, then the crop itself will redirect its focus. Once you have nitrogen, then vegetative growth is what you're going to be getting. So when you come to out the fertigation or fertilizer program, you'll see that the focus is not so much on allowing the plant to be in a vegetative mode, but to be in a constant generative mode. So the first stage, within the first 20 days, ensure that they are exposed to our cytoplex. The first application of our Miller program, which you'll hear further, will come in here. In the second stage, it's also to stimulate more of those storage roots. And at the third stage, we're focused on bulking up the plant. Now, in this situation, the program breaks down the Miller products into three active phases, weeks three, five, and seven. Why is this so? Scientifically, the plant will be doing some things. In other words, we refer to that as phenological stages. The crop naturally will go through what they call growth or phenological stages. The idea here is to apply cytokinins to allow for both shoot as well as root development. In this case, the purpose of our Miller cytokine is to signal to the plant give me more of the roots that are directed towards storage as well as tuber rather than to push the plant into a vegetative state. By 28 days after you've planted, you should be able to see, if you go there and scratch the soil, you should be able to see red or brownish roots that are directly going to be responsible for tuber development. If these are limited, then it means that you are slightly behind in terms of the growth and development of the crop. By day 49 and 80, by day 49, 80% 80 of those roots, so the decisions would have already been made within a month's time. 
a decision would have been already made in terms of the direction of the crop. And so you want to be in a position to signal to your plant, do it this particular way. <clears throat> now, the growth stages are controlled two ways. One, remember I said to you, select high performing slips. So genetically, you want to be in a position to choose planting materials from a field that has been performing at optimum. Secondly, environmental as or what we call the agroecological conditions. What is it that you, the farmer, would have been doing in the field to say to the crop, give me more tuber development? And so we can redirect the plant's focus by using our cytokine, green stem, and nutrient express via our foliage. Now, this is what we observed during that period. As we moved and shifted the plant's focus, what we saw happening was literally those roots that you, you had at least 80% more roots dedicated towards storage rather than feeding purposes. How is this an advantage? This is what you would have heard Mr. Griffith speaking of. More tubers per plant. Now let's say for example you plant on a one foot, on a, on a bed that is a hundred foot. And you plant right at the emitters. And those emitters are one foot apart. It means that you're planting a hundred slips. If it is that you're able to get more than one tuber per plant, it simply means that your market potential increases with the tuberization. I hope you got that one. Now, here's what we do. In the mixture, when we are doing our foliar treatments, we apply our insecticide. In this case, it could be cytotrax. Our cytokine, which is, of course, key or paramount. Our green stem and nutrient express. Now, you might notice each time we add green stem and cytokine, there's nutrient express following. I put it to you this way, farmers. Would you take an iron tablet on a hungry stomach? I sure don't think so. So what am I saying? If you're stimulating the plant to develop in a particular manner, you want to be feeding also. That feeding allows for the direct response that you're trying to stimulate. And so with doing that, we signal to the plants to produce more feeder roots. Now, our nutrient express is for 41, 27. In other words, we are directly supporting the signal we are sending to the crop, which is to give me more roots that are going to be directed for storage of um, or storage tubers, and at the same time, adding the potassium that is needed to create that initial growth and development that is taking place. Now, of course, somewhere within three weeks after you've planted out, the strategy, of course, is to go into your field with fertilizers. Now, you might ask, why wouldn't I fertilize same time as my plant? No. The harsh nature of the fertilizer, the nutrient that is there, can cause damage to the slips. And so, we want the plant to actually catch first, so it can benefit from the fertilizer that we're going to be applying. Usually we recommend our Abu Dham 14, 28, 14. And this, of course, can come in two variants, which is our slow release and we have a quick release. The idea here is to, that 28% is directed to root, root, and more root. And so it can be either incorporated or it can be applied as spot treatment to the different areas where you have the slips. Farmers sometimes apply it in between the plants so as to not cause any damage. And again, too, if you incorporate or if you're not able to incorporate, we normally suggest or recommend that you apply water immediately after. What is the benefit of that? You don't want to have what they call volatilization or the fertilizer evaporating. And so with heat, the nutrient itself can vaporize. So we suggest apply water immediately. Now to an acre of land, we apply 250 to 350 pounds to the acre. And of course, this can be more or less. And why is that so? Depending on your 
level of fertility. Now, once you've done this, you are pretty much in the right or in the bag to get a bumper crop. Additionally, or further into your crop, the use of dimethoid or, as I said earlier, diazinon. And bear in mind, as I said to you, in this situation, you can use your drip systems to apply your insecticides to your soil so as to prevent any eggs that would have been laying, any adults that is trying to penetrate your roots to go down and to lay eggs. They are, of course, controlled. Now, this is the second of three applications, and this is now at week five. Dimethoate is used as a weaver strategy to control the pupa of the insect pest. It can also be used to control white flies as well as the beetles that are present in it. Should you also have issues with webworm, this one application can give you a perfect knockdown. Now, I do recall that Dimethoate is one of our most pungent uh, products. And so after you apply it, people might wonder what you just did to your field but it will work as both controlling the insects that are present and that odor that is there, it will of course be as a repellent. So the second application of your Miller program is at week five with cytokine, green stem, and nutrient express. Now at week five, the field is almost ready to be closed up meaning the vines are spreading out rapidly and they are moving out. Here again, the final application of your fertilizers can come in. If you're using a drip irrigation system and you're using perhaps a venturi or something of the sorts, then what you can always do is to apply via your venturi. We have, of course, soluble fertilizers, which we will discuss on further. So we have granular options, which is our 11-22-22 or our 15-5-35. This, of course, is applied at 350 pounds. Note now that the volume of nutrients has increased. And it has increased simply because the bulking up stage is just about to begin. You want to be feeding a plant because there is no a higher level or higher demand for potassium. And so you increase that amount so as to allow for storing and the buildup of your carbohydrates that will occur over the period of time. And so what you'll start to see, if you go back into your field, and again, for me farmers, I try to at least go see what's going on. I just don't leave the field like that. I go scratch one and two here and there just to make sure. So I take a few glimpses to see what is going on. And that, of course, will signal. You would have seen them at least pencil size at week three. By week five, you would have been getting to at least two inches or more in terms of size. Now, the third applic application of your Miller program comes at week seven. And the program will see you using Dazin and New Film P and, of course, the products I mentioned earlier. Of course, at this point in time, you will not just have microtubers, but significantly larger tubers inside the field. Again, I cannot overemphasize the need to use your Miller program correctly because, once again, what you will see happening are multiple tuber sets coming through. This, of course, will come back into the amount of cash you're going to be getting at the end. Now, I said it to you earlier. And I want to repeat it again. Repeat it. Higher levels of nitrogen can lead to excessive vine growth and poor tuber development. Again, I know that we want to add our organic matter to our soils. But limiting the amount, of course, is important because you don't want to have this excessive flush in your crop. In instances where you have it, in some cases, you'll have this lovely green field and when you start searching limited to no tuber the key at this point is to increase the number or the higher levels of potassium so if you are using a fertilizer the last two numbers are what would be important in terms of the crops development 
the 22, 22, or the 35, which is what is critical at this stage. Now, for Lally, we can also apply our Miller Sugar Express. This, of course, can be applied at up to 1 kg per drum or 30 grams per gallon of water. The application of our potassium thiosulfate via your drip system or our fertilizers, which again, our Agosol 91836 can be utilized. Now, again, I'd mentioned to you, the use of your Nutrient Express is to aid in the building blocks of protein. It provides multiple vitamins to the plant, and at the same time, it contains seaweed extract. Now, this, of course, this carbohydrate source goes directly into your plant system and helps to increase your yield. Your Sugar Express, within less than 48 hours, you'll start seeing a difference in the size of your tubers. Now, I mentioned to you that we do have our soluble fertilizers. We have our 10540 in our Agosol line, as well as a 91836 that can be applied via your drip system. And this, of course, will assist you with the bulking up stage of the crop. You can speak to your local representatives or your local farm store to acquire these products. Now, let's dissect all this conversation and let's switch gears and look at some numbers. Can it really work in terms of what is it that we're saying? The numbers don't tell any lie. When you look at overall input per acre, Mr. Griffiths would have told you that he would have been getting a 100% increase. This, of course, can be higher or even lower. Let's start with lower, and why so? If it is that you're starting out for the first time, then your costs for your irrigation setup and those other things will cause your rate of return to be lower. I hope you follow what I just said. So, for farmers who are starting out and you're putting in over $200,000, your irrigation equipment as well as even the cost per pound can determine the rate of return. Now, of course, we spread those fixed assets over a longer period of time, right? So we don't want to recoup the money same time for the irrigation system because we're going to use it in next crop. So we allow it to pay for itself over a longer period of time. So your labor inputs to include the clearing your land, if needs be, your plowing of the land, all of these activities come up to $226,000. Now again, depending on where you are, the topography, and the cost for labor, this number can go down. We are looking at the highest end here in terms of um, input cost. Sometimes we are paying these guys up to $3,000 a day or even more to do labor work in terms of weeding, in terms of spraying, or even for planting to cut the drills and so on and so forth. So our initial expenditure with a rain-fed system would have been approximately $226,500. And we are looking at a marketable yield of 8,000 pounds. We were able to sell at farm gate price, which is current, which is $100 per pound. And our gross revenue or income would have been $800,000. When we pull our expenditures from that, which of course includes our initial planting, transporting of equipment, etc., we are looking at a net income of $573,000. Now, this of course would have marked a 100% profit in terms of the previous crop cycle. One, he would have been able to harvest more tubers over a longer period of time. Now note, this is just the initial harvest. Remember, February is coming, and we have also to dig in January. So we have two more cycles to go. And already, we would have cleared our expenditure. The most we will be paying now is to employ these guys again to come and dig, and we just pick up everything 
take it to market or if our higglers come on spot. So the idea here is that rather than being able to just dig or find some smaller tubers, you're able to harvest in a succession over a longer period of time. Also with the program, what we also identified, which is a key point here, are grade A tubers, greater than two pounds, some four pounds, some six pound sizes, which of course, those persons who we were selling to preferred. You have persons who wanted two pound sizes so you can differentiate your market and still command premium prices. Now, the key factor here is that we had almost zero rejects. We didn't have any that was weevil infested, a few, just a few with rats that bit up. So those we still put into the numbers, but it was far less than 2%. Again too, the program itself would have lent itself to seeing other farmers using the crop care program by themselves. This was our demonstration plot, by the way. Other farmers would have taken on the challenge. All I would have done is to monitor them and they too would have seen a higher level of returns in terms of the tuber formation, which is multiple tubers per root zone, and higher quality in terms of insect pest free. The use of the diameter weight, as I would mentioned to you earlier, in successive periods would have caused um, or acted as a repellent. Um, this is one such farmer, this is Miguel Francis in Clarendon, he's in Gravel Hill, and he's experiencing some excellent products using our sweet potato weevil control strategy, which includes our diazinon, our caprid, our caratrax, and of course our nutrient express cytokine and green stem. And these are other farmers who are benefiting from similar experiences. Note the sizes and the quality and the shape of the tubers. And believe me, these go in a day or in a couple seconds. This is a farmer who shared his success story with me um, from Mike Town in Manchester. He just said, Sir P, I took the instructions they gave me. Look at what we're getting. Look at what we're finding per root. Multiple tubers, large enough to be marketed, clean and free from insect damage and pest damage. Here's another success story in New Hall, again in Manchester. The farmer taking on the program onto herself. Yes, a female farmer. And putting in the work and getting the quality results from the field. And of course, Mr. Spence would have shared this farmer, um, Sharon Rankin, with you last week from Donegal, who, of course, took on the challenge to use the Alchem advantage with the program, starting from treating the slips, and she's averaging over four pounds per tuber and 600 pounds in under a 66 by 66, which is one square feet of land. The program would have seen her producing cleaner planting, cleaner food, better, healthier crop all around. Again, more farmers just sending in to say, listen, we've tried it, we've seen that it works, and we're now sharing it with you, our viewers, to say, take the challenge. Let us walk, walk you through the program and, of course, see if you can even do better than what some of these farmers are boasting about. I challenge you to take this on. Reach out to us at our various contact points. Our agronomists are always in the field. You can get us at our office line at 757-0022-4 or you can WhatsApp us at 401-4766. Tune in next week Wednesday and every other Wednesday thereafter for our, our, our Farming Today program. And of course, join Dennis Lecky live next week, Tuesday the 15th at 1 p.m. as we'll be looking at you know, growing orchids and poinsettias in this our Yuletide season. 
farmers walk good and be safe. Are there questions? That okay, Parker, there's a question from CC Farms JA. Yes. What size farm did Mr. Griffiths have? All right, it's this, this is a half acre setup that we did. So it was, of course, a rain fed setting. So the, on a slightly inclined, um, slightly stony, but the idea also is that this is rain fed. So if rain don't fall, the crop literally will suffer. Um, again, that's why I challenge some farmers who have irrigation to say, listen, if we can get this kind of quality on a plot of land without water, it just when rainfall, then why do you have water? Take on the challenge. Hope question. that answers the question. Question from Brick Farm Production. Yes. Brick Fence Production. Is this one reaping he got a thousand pound or multiple reaping? All right. So what would have happened? It's over. It's going to be over up here. We just sampled the field last week, Monday. Just, and we say sampled, we got to a certain timeline. We wanted to see what we would have been getting at this year. Remember, we are doing not just, it's a demonstration plot, but at the same time, we want to see what is that is going on. So the 2,000 pounds initially was a one-off reaping just to see what was happening. But the successive harvest is what we're also looking at. So the cumulative aspect of things is brought into beer. The size, might I just mention, that we would have searched, so to speak, is a quarter acre. So we didn't do the entire half acre. So the 2,000 pounds come from a quarter acre setting. We just go to randomly pick out some, say, okay, and just, just to evaluate the kind of yields that we were getting. What are the benefits of using Akem Sweet Potato Crop Care Program? No, the benefits I, I do believe at this time speaks for themselves in terms of the quality tubers that you'll be getting. That's one. The multiple tubers that you'll be seeing per plant. This, of course, translates obviously into dollars and cents, which is another benefit. Thirdly, economically, if you are unable to produce and to make profit, then you, I would say you're farming fool of yourself, but not, not to call you that, eh? But we want to be in a position so to be in profit-making mode. And so with the successive applications of our products, you'll see an increase in the vigor, the tuber development, and of course the marketable yield, which will spin off into dollars and cents. And generally, it is on the plus side. Why is it so important for the Miller products to be applied at weeks 3, 5, and 7? All right. As I had mentioned to you earlier, and that's a very good question, the timeline or the phenology in the plant's development is what you're targeting. You're targeting the application at week 3 because it would have been post-planting and the plant would have been developing those roots. You want a signal to that young plant from that early stage Give me tuber roots. If you skip that and go to week five, fine. But anytime after week seven, uh, after the seventh application, or the third application of week seven, the plant would have gone into a different mode of action, which is either to become generative on its own or vegetative. You want to be able to steer that development into the focus that you want, which is tuber development. Um, the one final question, where can I get a crop care guide? And I'll answer that. Um, you can reach out to us on WhatsApp, 876-401-4766, and send us your email address, and it will be sent to you. Good. So, and also, I must say to our farmers, I know we have collectors of information, but I rather have doers with information. Let's go and execute our crop care guides. For persons who want additional information and you have access to our yearly calendars, one will be published shortly, those guides are always in them. Hold on to a copy and don't just keep it for keepsake and for the dates. I have farmers who read it just before they go to bed 
and the first thing in the morning as they wake up. Because the information is so critical. They don't want to miss out or forget anything. So bear that in mind. And should you have a need for further instruction or guidance, we have agronomists right across the length and breadth of Jamaica. I'm Dean Parker and I'm in Manchester and Clarendon. I hear that there's another question. Go ahead. Where can I find the Miller products in Falmouth? It's hard to get. Um, there's a farm store in Falmouth called Ong Zing Farm Store. You can get yes. it there. Also, as I was saying, we, our agronomist, Dale Smith, in, is responsible for Trelawney, St. James, and Hanover. So if you send us your information, of course, Dale or Aluda will get in touch with you so we can guide your farming activities. There's Dennis Lecky in the northern side, northeastern side, who um, covers St. Anne and St. Mary and Portland. And there's, of course, John R. Johnson in St. Catherine, St. Andrew and St. Thomas, and Sion Spence in Westmoreland and St. Elizabeth. So we have the length and depth of experience with our teams that can provide you with our technical guidance. And should we not know, for some strange reason, we have external parties we can reach, always reach out to for further details. So thanks for participating. Be safe this season and ensure that you follow the protocols, keep your family safe, and of course, walk good till next time.